Hi, this is David Stanko for AmericanSalon.com. Join me every other week to hear me interview industry celebs and other interesting folks. All right, here we are with another master of the professional salon industry, Miss Ruth Roche. Good morning, Ruth. Good morning, David. So Ruth and I have been friends for nearly 20 years. We've traveled the world. We've shared stages. Uh, we've shared models. And we even did a program back in the 90s for Redkin called A Delightful Day with Ruth and David. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. I'll never forget. <laughs> <laughs> we actually still share some of the same clients that go to you for cut and, and me for color. So we're thrilled that you're here for this master series, and let's dig in and get to know Ruth Roche a little bit. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. First question, just for everybody out there, where are you from exactly? I'm not, well, I don't know. Um, my dad was in the Navy, so we moved around a lot when I was a kid. I was born in San Francisco, and I've lived all over with my, you know, when I was still living at home, and then I've moved all over since then. So, but I've been in New York for 20 years. Wow, that's a good time, huh? Um, I've been here 20 years as well. In fact, we, that's when we first met each other. Yeah. I remember helping you move into your apartment and <laughs> drinking, uh, the cleaning fluid instead of my Diet Coke. That's right. I do remember <laughs> that. I'm glad to know you're still with us. Uh, <laughs> um, moving on to just sort of style, how would you, how would you define your own personal style? I would say my style is, is classic with a little bit of an edge. I don't, I yeah, I, I, I would say my style is more classic with an edge and that I don't have um, a real, I'm not super trendy, but I am very, very cool. Well, that's true. <laughs> you are. You are super cool. The reason I asked is because you've won Naha four times and that is quite an accomplishment. So I wonder, you know, how does your personal style influence the work you create, which led you to win? That's that's a really cool cool question. I um, I would say it has a lot to do with how my my pictures are too, is that I always do pretty simple things that have a little bit of an edge to them. All right. So in terms of developing that sort of aesthetic, who would you say was the uh, greatest influence in your career? De oh, by far it's Trevor Sorby because when I first started out, he was the one I went and trained with. I became his artistic director, and according to him as well, you know, when he first met me, I was a terrible hairdresser. <laughs> so, so I learned everything from him, and and also from Vivian McKinder. Yeah, wow, those are two industry greats to to be able to say are are mentors of yours. Um, here's a great question: If you weren't a hairdresser. And thank God we have you in the business. <laughs> if you weren't a hairdresser, what career would you choose? Well, I, I think I would be, if I, I'd like to have my own talk show. Um, and But that's, you know, that's probably gone out the window. But that was something I always wanted. But the other thing is to be a painter. I love painting. It's just like my one way besides hair to just sort of disappear and, and lose time and, and just get into it and feel one with the canvas. Do you still paint now? I do. I just started two years ago and um, I paint these big canvases that are like three feet by four feet and they're big, big, big flowers. And is it oil or water or chalk? What do you use? I use acrylics. Okay. Chalk. <laughs> well, I guess it could be chalk. It could be chalk. <laughs> There are some very famous chalk artists. Oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, on American Salon's blog, you have your own little section of the world, right? Yes, What's yes. it called? It's called Out There with, with Ruth Roach. Okay, <laughs> so um, I'm curious. I, I want to hear directly from you. Uh, why would I want to tune into that? What's the, you know, my takeaway on that? Well, there's a couple things. If you think about the title out there, it sort of talks about it's. it could be me out in the world doing something where there's something interesting going on that I'm talking about. Or it could be that you're just participating in my brain, which is out there, which I'm kind of quirky and a little bit strange, and you never know where I'm going to come from, um, especially with my sense of humor. So it's about uh, working with what's piquing my interest that I think might pique someone else's interest too. Well, that's a good angle. 
And since you've jumped into this video blogging era, do you have any tips for the listeners on how they would make that plunge themselves? Yeah, just do it, you know, because it's, it, I, if you could spend too much time figuring out what and how and all that stuff you want to do, if you just start um, somewhere, it's going to evolve and, and start to have a life of its own and, a, and a, a frame that has a start and a finish and, you know, sort of a rhythm to it. But I think just starting with whatever it is you're passionate about, what you love, and then let it become what it's going to become. Yeah, that seems to be a common theme about just do it. And then, you know, if you don't like it, erase it yeah. or start over or try a different angle. So that's a great tip, Ruth. Um, I'm going to ask you a couple questions that you always ask people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it doesn't have to do with chalk and oh, artwork. Um, it has to do with um, how do you, Ruth Roche, motivate people? Well, I like to empower people to um, be their own artist, so to trust their own gut and to, to learn how to trust their own eye and use what they already know to create something new. So it's about giving people the confidence to try something they've always wanted to try or to give them the confidence to do something that they've never done before and to know that they're going to have great results. So I, I like to instill that, that confidence and that assured approach that people will want to try it again, right, and not be afraid to try it on clients. All right. That's good tips. Um, now, of course, the million-dollar question is, how do you motivate yourself? Yes. Well, I, I have to say, being an educator and being a blogger now, and it sounds so weird to say that, but being, you know, someone who has to come up with new things is definitely a way to stay motivated because you have to continue to grow and all that stuff. I definitely look to fashion um, as an inspiration and European fashion magazines. Um, but I also, like, for example, I'm going to Salon International in London. I'm actually leaving tomorrow. And then I'm going to Paris for a week to shoot with a photographer friend of mine who's done most of the stuff in my portfolio and has become very accomplished and he lives in Paris so I'm going to sit at cafes and you know brainstorm with him we're going to both do something that really excites us. Well that's super cool I just got back from Paris and it was fashion week there aye, aye. so to uh, sit and watch the people was just amazing I think that's a great opportunity for you and um, you've been a mentor of mine a personal friend. We've shared many hours behind stage and on stage. And uh, sometimes I just stand back and watch the subtlety of your work and it inspires me. So I hope that the listeners will take away that inspiration about you because I think you're a fantastic woman. You're a talented uh, hairdresser and um, you're fun to travel with. So <laughs> <laughs> Ruth Roche, thank you for coming in and being part of our master's series and uh, travel safely. Thank you so much.